All right, good day everyone. My name is Chris Avis. I am with the Microsoft Across America TechNet Evangelism team. And today we are speaking with Russ Humphreys. He is a senior program manager with the System Integrity Group at Microsoft. And we're going to be talking about the BitLocker technology specifically today. So for the benefit of the audience who may not know what BitLocker is, Russ, why don't you go ahead and tell us what BitLocker is and what does it give to us? Excellent. So. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, BitLocker, uh, BitLocker Drive Encryption, as its uh, its full title, uh, encrypts drives, which makes it a, a pretty descriptive product title, really. Uh, why would you want to encrypt a whole drive, and what does that mean? Well, BitLocker encrypts the contents of a uh, of a drive, a, a volume or partition, if you will, uh, at the block, sector, or cluster level. So the it, it actually does its work underneath the file system. This actually encrypts the entire content at a, at a cluster level of the hard drive itself. This has a number of benefits. Um, BitLocker was specifically written to address the problem of protecting data when it's at rest. Uh, if you were to accidentally lose a laptop, uh, hopefully your laptop's protected with a username and password. Mm -hmm. But if a bad guy finds that stolen la that laptop or steals that laptop in the back of a cab or something, they could perhaps boot another operating system on a, a CD or DVD and use a tool to forensically look at the contents of the drive. And once they've um, uh, mapped the drive, if you will, mounted the physical volume, they can actually look at the contents of that volume because the host operating system isn't protecting the file system, mm -hmm. which means they can look at the contents of files if they themselves are not encrypted. But they can also look at things like swap space, the hibernation file, temporary files, uh, Internet Explorer cache, uh, all sorts of things that may provide them some information. Uh, they're basically vectors where um, uh, data can leak. And data leakage prevention is real forefront of mind for a, a, a lot of companies now, right. unfortunately because of what a lot of headlines we've seen. You know, oh, absolutely. Laptops and desktops um, as well. It's not just a laptop technology uh, being stolen from, from buildings. Um, uh, being stolen out of hotel rooms, being lost in the back of cabs and so yeah. forth is forefront of mind and you know, most of our customers quite correctly uh, don't want to, to, to have uh, their company name appear above the fold in the, in the New York Times, and I can understand that, but also there's legislation, um, data protection and compliance legislation that's been brought into effect by, by um, different countries at a country level and, and different states within America to um, drive some form of, of compliance by organizations to meet some level or bar of, of data protection. Mm -hmm. And what BitLocker Drive Encryption provides is for uh, 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 the protection of data at rest to meet some of those legislative needs. Um, it works uh, in Vista RTM uh, on the C colon drive, as it's typically lettered, basically the operating system volume. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to protect the operating system and all the data that's stored on it. We listen to customers as a company, of course, all the time, and we recognized and heard that um, a portion of our customers had multi-volume or multi-petition uh, environments on their laptops and desktops. Uh, they may have, for example, a, a C colon in which the operating system might live. They may have a, a D colon where they might install their applications, mm -hmm. Office and so forth. And they may even have another driver, maybe an E colon, in which all their data is stored. And they wanted to be able to provide BitLocker full volume encryption technology to all of those volumes. So we listened to that request and need, and we enhanced BitLocker. So you'll find that in uh, Windows Vista SP1, uh, BitLocker drive encryption will support multiple volumes. Excellent. And in fact, you also see that technology exists in Windows Server 2008. Okay. Uh, again, uh, out of the gate, 2008 will allow um, uh, uh, someone who's configuring their server to protect all of the volumes on that server. Okay. So you had mentioned that encryption technologies have been around for a while. Uh, what is the difference between BitLocker, which encrypts the drive, and EFS, which is in the operating system, and then even maybe RMS, Rights Management Services? When would we use those different types of technologies to protect or encrypt data? Great question. Yeah, RMS, EFS, and BitLocker, which we sometimes call BDE for BitLocker Drive Encryption. I guess that's keeping the, the three-letter thing going. <laughs> yeah, we can't, we can't get away from that, can we? TLAs. <laughs> it's a, I, I guess that's a, 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 a yes, three-letter acronym. is a requirement of our industry, not just Microsoft. Yes. <laughs> so um, 
basically those technologies, the ones you've listed, RMS, EFS, and, and BitLocker drive encryption, were designed and addressed different threat models. What does that mean? Well, you'd use the technologies to protect data uh, using, uh, when you want to protect the data in different models of use. I would use RMS to protect perhaps a Word document or an Outlook email mm -hmm. when I'm going to no knowledgeably and, and intentionally share that with some perhaps business partners. Mm -hmm. But I want to have some level of protection, not necessarily because there's not trust there, because if I'm doing business with you and I'm sending you the document, I, presumably there's a level of trust there, mm -hmm. an important part of security. What I'm really probably trying to protect against is the whoops factor. And an awful lot of security is designed to address that whoops factor. Maybe I accidentally sent it to someone I didn't mean to. Perhaps you might accidentally forward that document right. or email. So RMS is about protecting information that I want to share and uh, um, creating controls in an environment that allows me to do that. EFS. EFS is a technology that's really designed around me, the user, the data owner. I have a document that I don't really want to share. That's the point of EFS, encrypting file system. It's going to encrypt a file that I think is personal and pertinent to me. Mm -hmm. BitLocker Drive Encryption, if you will, is a data protection technology that addresses specific threats that aren't necessarily addressed by either of the previous technologies. It's about protecting the system integrity, the integrity of not just the operating system, but the data that's stored at the disk when, when the operating system's at rest, the, the data at rest problem I, I talked about earlier. So BitLocker provides a general protection for an entire volume, an entire drive, if you will, upon which you can stack those other technologies. These aren't ors, these can be ands. Mm -hmm. Now, I, would re I often recommend, yes, of course, you can use BitLocker um, and or RMS together and BitLocker and EFS together. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you may end up with stacked encryption, but the reality is that the performance of all of these products is so good that you're not really going to notice much of a difference. And again, you're, uh, you're protecting it against different threat models. Uh, and, and a theme, a, a good and constant theme with security, and one that's replicated elsewhere in Vista, is defense in depth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So layers of the onion, the more layers of protection generally, exactly. the better. Yeah. So Bedlocker augments those other technologies and is designed to address very different threats. OK, excellent, excellent. So. Let's, let's dive a little bit into BitLocker and how we manage that itself. Mm -hmm. We have this concept of a TPM, or a Trusted Platform Module chip, mm -hmm. that resides in the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. is, is that the only means of implementing BitLocker? Do yep. we have some alternatives for people that may want to use Vista on older hardware that doesn't have the TPM chip? No, absolutely. I mean, we, we recommend and I personally recommend that you leverage BitLocker with a TPM chip because it has certain benefits that you do not get uh, unless you have that chip. That we leverage the TPM in the first place to address the problem of where do you put the key. Right. right. Well, we can address that problem in other ways by having the key stored off the physical device. If you have a key that's not protected with something on the device, if you basically just try and obfuscate it, Somebody somewhere is going to figure out how you split it up and where you it's hit it. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. So we leverage the TPM to keep a secret. That's, that's what the Trusted Platform Module, this cryptographic coprocessor is kind of a way to think of it. That's what it was designed to do, be good at keeping secrets. As you've astutely pointed out, not everybody has hardware yet that's got TPMs in, although they're becoming ubiquitous. For those customers, we support other scenarios, and, and probably the, the, the best one to talk about is the fact that we support um, the storage of the key on a USB device, a USB drive, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, like everything, there's some technical requirements. One of those that may not be apparent immediately is that although you can access your USB stick in Windows, when Windows is up and running, you need to be very cautious and check that your BIOS supports the access of a USB stick in the pre-boot environment. Mm -hmm. Because when you bedrock or protect your environment, you're encrypting the operating system itself. And the loader will need to be able to load the key that's required to mount and unlock, if you will, mm -hmm. access to that operating system volume. And if you can't access the drive in the pre-boot, uh, in, 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 in the USB stick in the pre-boot environment, you're going to have problems. We recognize that was an issue. We've actually built some tests into the UI and the UX for, for individuals who are, who are perhaps um, uh, doing it on, on their own um, to test for those scenarios. So uh, we, we, we've addressed that in the UI and the UX, but it's something to be you know, to consider. We actually allow people.